Hi class, this activity is going to go through a subsidized and unsubsidized loan example. The problem I grabbed is from Alex, so you can use this to help you on your Alex problems, and this will be similar to what you're going to see for the student loans on the major assignment as well. I have three tabs here in this template. The first tab is what we're going to be completing. The second tab is what the problem looks like in Alex. So if you want a visual of what this problem will look like when you approach it in Alex. And then the third tab is our list of finance formulas. All right, so we're going to be completing the first tab. In the first tab, we have an example of a subsidized and unsubsidized loan. So we have Dan has two years left in college. He took out a student loan for $12,130. The loan has an annual interest rate of 8.7%. Dan graduated two years after acquiring the loan and began repaying the loan immediately upon graduation. According to the terms of the loan, Dan will make monthly payments for five years five years after graduation. During the two years he was in school and not making payments, the loan accrued simple interest. Part A, if Dan's loan is subsidized, find the monthly payment. Part B, if Dan's loan is unsubsidized, find the monthly payment. Okay, so let's put our name in to get started. So when you talk about subsidized and unsubsidized loans, these are student loans. These are the loans that you have options to get when you um, enter into school. A subsidized loan does not accrue interest while you're in school. So a subsidized loan, the government pays the interest on the loan while you are in school. So for a subsidized loan, the amount of the loan you take out is the amount of money you repay when you graduate. For an unsubsidized loan, the government is not going to pay that interest while you're in school. So an unsubsidized loan, you don't have to make payments on it while you're in school, but that money will accrue interest. It's going to accrue simple interest according to our problem. So you have to figure out the new principal amount when you graduate because it will be higher than the amount that you actually took out the loan for. So for an unsubsidized loan, you are going to have interest applied before you graduate, so you need to find the new principal amount. All right, so let's work through the problem. Okay, so for this problem, subsidized and unsubsidized, we're going to have the same start of the loan that we took out. So when we're talking about the amount of the, the, amount of the loan, this is the amount of the loan we took out. So Dan took out a loan for $12,130. During that loan, while he was in school, let's see, he graduated two years after acquiring the loan. So after we got this loan, we spent two years in school. So that's our time in school. And then we're going to make monthly payments for five years after graduation. So the time we're paying back the loan is the time after graduation. So that'll be five years. And then we need the rate and the compounding. The rate is the percentage. And again, it's going to be the same for both loans. We've got an 8.7%. 8.7%. And then we're doing monthly payments. That is the end goal to find the monthly payment. So monthly, 12 times a year. Our compounding is 12. All right, so we need to calculate the principal amount we're going to repay. And then once we know that, then we can find the monthly payment. So I'm going to start with the subsidized loan, and then we'll do the unsubsidized loan. Okay, so for the subsidized loan, again, no interest is being accrued while we're in school. So when you do this problem in Alex, you don't need to know how much time you spent in school. Doesn't matter. Not for the subsidized loan. So the principal amount we're going to repay, it doesn't change. It's the amount of the loan we took out. So let's self-reference that number down. So type my equal sign, click on that 12,130, hit enter. Principal amount I'm repaying is not changing because the government is paying the interest for me, but I've graduated. So now I have to find the monthly payment and interest will start being applied. So I need to find my compound interest monthly payment formula. So go to our finance formulas and we need to find the monthly payment with compounding. And that's our last formula on the list. The last formula is the only formula that helps us find the monthly payment, the M value. So this is the one we need. It's the only one that gives us the monthly payment when we're compounding. All right, so I'll copy this down here. Okay, so the p-value, I want to make sure I use the p-value as the principal amount to repay. 
my R is the 8.7%, my N is the 12, and then my T is the time I'm paying back the loan. It's the five. So I don't care about the time in school right now. So start with the equal sign. Click on your p-value, type your star, open parentheses, click on that rate, type your slash, click on the 12, close parentheses, slash, open parentheses, one minus, open parentheses, one plus, r divided by n. So click on that percentage, type your slash, click on that 12, close the parentheses. We need our exponent key, which is above the six. Open the parenthesis minus n times t. So we need the 12 times the time paying back the loan, which is the five, and then a double close parenthesis, and then we'll hit enter. And then let's go ahead and format that as currency because this is a monthly payment. So if we took out a loan for $12,130 at 8.7% interest, we made monthly payments over five years, we would be making monthly payments of $250.04. So our monthly payment to pay off the loan would be $250.04. And that is the unsubsidized loan. Or sorry, I'm sorry. That is the subsidized. That We did the subsidized. That is the subsidized loan. Okay, now let's do the unsubsidized. Okay, so an unsubsidized, the time in school now matters. We need to figure out how much interest we accrued while we were in school. So our p-value is now going to change. So let's go back up to the problem. It says the loan accrued simple interest while we're in school. So during the two years in school and not making payments, the loan accrued simple interest. So we need to find the future value of this loan using simple interest over two years with that 8.7%. So let me grab our simple interest formula. I'm looking for the future value. So I wanna go ahead and grab the second simple interest formula we have. You can use the first one, get the interest and add it back onto the principal. I'm gonna use the second one so I can do everything in one cell. Okay, let's copy that down here. All right, so we are using simple interest. We are doing simple interest for that 12,000 over two years with 8.7% interest. We are ignoring the five and we are ignoring the 12 because the five is time outside of school. The 12 is for the compounding. We don't need compounding right now. We're doing simple interest for the time in school. Start with my equal sign, grab the amount of the loan. So click on the 12,131st times open parenthesis one plus the rate, the percentage times the time in school. So times the two, close the parenthesis and then hit enter. This value should be slightly higher than the original amount of the loan. So the original amount of our loan was 12130 Now the amount we have to pay back is $14,240.62. So we accrued some interest while we're in school. So now that has been added back onto our loan. And now we have to pay back this $14,000. For an unsubsidized loan, you're always going to pay back more money because you have that extra interest added on. All right, so now let's find the monthly payment for the unsubsidized loan. So when we do the monthly payment, we wanna use the new p-value that we just calculated, that same rate we've been using, the 12 for our n value, and then this is the time we're paying back on the loan. So this is the time out of school, the five years. Start with our equal sign, grab that new p-value that we just calculated, type our star, open parenthesis, R divided by N, close parenthesis, slash, open parenthesis, one minus, open parenthesis, one plus, R divided by N, close parenthesis, our exponent key above the six, open parenthesis, negative N times T, and this T is the time we're paying back the loan, the five and then double close parenthesis. And then once you finish, hit enter. All right, and again, this is a monthly payment amount, so let's go ahead and format it as currency. 
So then we can see with the unsubsidized loan, we're paying back $293.54. So it's going to be slightly more than the subsidized loan. And you should always see it set up like that. Because again, with the unsubsidized loan, you have interest being added onto the loan while you're in school. So the amount you pay back is higher than the original amount of the loan. For a subsidized loan, the government is paying that interest on the loan while you're in school. So the amount you borrow is the amount you pay back. So it's always going to be a smaller amount you pay back on the subsidized loan, and then it'll be a smaller monthly payment. And then this is in our ALPS class. So if you look at it in the real world, make sure you do compare every aspect of the loan. Compare the amounts of the loan, the rates, the compounding. You could possibly have different rates in the real world. All right, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.